schizophrenia or not? You know, hearing voices is not a sign of mental illness necessarily. You have to consider that it can be a military technology. And this is the greatest, uh, I would say, insult to medical doctors that we are not taught this. No medical doctors generally know of military technology that you can, with synthetic telepathy, make people hear voices in their heads. Voice to skull. Apparatus for audibly communicating speech using the radio frequency hearing effect. Now we're getting into transmitting voices directly into people's heads. A modulation process with a fully suppressed carrier and input processor filtering to produce an encoded output for amplitude modulation and audio speech processor filtering. Intelligible subjective sound is produced when the encoded signal is demodulated using the RF hearing effect. So again, uh, th th they've got um, uh, diagrams here explaining exactly how this can be done. We're talking about uh, putting speech uh, through various frequencies being decoded by the human brain as an actual voice. See, there's nothing crazy about it, even if so can you expand on that exactly? Well, what, what? like telepathy. Yeah. You know, the thing with mind control is, is um, very bad because they call it synthetic telepathy. They can induce thoughts in you, they can induce um, uh, voices in your head, and of course voices in your head that you're crazy, yeah. you know. They can do that and they have done that from, at least officially, uh, from the Iraqi First War. They gave orders to soldiers straight into their head. Of course, they were Ameri guinea pigs. American soldiers. American, yeah, right. And if this this did technology, they the, did they use it on the uh, on the enemy to, as well? Yes, in a way, because uh, I always remember I was so shocked when I saw saw a picture when uh, when um, soldiers came uh, from bunkers, Iraqi soldiers. They had bunkers and about three yard uh, walls. You know, they had drinks and food for six months. They had Americans had. Um, sent helicopters above and they had Arabic speaking uh, uh, interpreters who spoke Arabic to them and they were sending with microwaves orders to come out. They were being mind controlled and all of a sudden all the guys came out with no reason at all. Nobody attacked physically. It was just done with mind control. You know, when you know you're on the side of right you know, you have that, uh, that grace of God, I guess, with you uh, when you know you're doing the right thing. And the right thing's not always the easiest thing. Like I told you, I never in a million years planned on being the, uh, one of the spearheads. Now you were telling me that during the break. How did you it just like, wow, it just got, and now you've learned more and more about it. Well, uh, after the book came out and I had, you know, thousands of other victims come forward and say thank you for putting a book out on it and, and using whatever, you know, cred that I have with having a couple of initials behind my name, not that... That's any big thing, but uh, um, the one thing that uh, I was happy that the book did is I had a lot of families call me and say, you know, we have a son that's been complaining about hearing voices and complaining of, you know, government surveillance. Uh, we've had him to five different psychiatrists. They've shocked him. They've had him on meds. It never goes away. Now we have a little better understanding about maybe what he's dealing with. You know, and if that had only happened once, it would have been worth having wrote the book. You know, it's happened hundreds of times. Um, where people have actually, you know, let psychiatrists do electroconvulsive therapy on loved ones that were voicing these complaints. Now we're kind of going toward an educational campaign. Uh, we need to educate at least local psychiatrists. Now at the top of the psychiatric chain, uh, Canadian uh, Psychiatric Association, the American Psychiatric Association, they know very well what these weapons. Oh, they're are. the people running it. Yeah, they're the ones who started a lot of the MK Ultra programs that have advanced to where we're at now. Now, at the local level, where you're being maybe mandated to see a psychiatrist, they probably are largely ignorant of the technology. But unfortunately, no matter how much proof these victims put in front of psychiatrists, they're not looking at anything. Well, that's the question. How do you tell, because you've always been in contact about real schizophrenics then, how do you tell somebody who's crazy versus somebody who... Well, the bottom line is schizophrenia usually starts at an early age. You don't. Most of the victims that I'm talking to, 
can, can pinpoint the time their stalking started and their hearing voices started. And typically it's late 30s, early 40s. You just don't see that with schizophrenia. Schizophrenia uh, is usually 18 to 28 in a male. It can be a little bit later uh, in a female. So now what's happening is a lot of these victims are being um, diagnosed with delusional disorder or psychosis otherwise specified, which means you've got something going on and we don't know what it is. On top of that, the medications won't treat this. You know, having worked with a lot of these victims that are hearing voices that are being put into their head, not from schizophrenia, most of them kind of have an idea of where it's coming from. Some of them are wrong because the technology is meant to foster a wrong belief, make you think it's you know, your relatives or your parents or you know, your work. When in, in reality, at least from what we found with counter surveillance in San Antonio, it's usually a private investigative group made up of former federal employees. Yeah, that's why you've been on the news. You guys have actually caught people before in the act. Exactly. Wow. Oh, man, I tell you. And, and, and so you've got uh, over a million private contractors operating domestically just in, just in PSYOPs, they admit. There's too many clearances out there. Too many clearances. Uh, and, you know, looking at mind control technology, they've always contracted it out. It's never done directly by the CIA, not since the 60s. Absolutely. Wow. Looking at my channel analytics, I have realized that my audience is above the age of 25 and predominantly between the age of 35 to 44 years old. Something got me thinking. There are way too many old victims, too old to be schizophrenic. 3. That can cause insanity, and it was an experiment. One of the experiments was to take an ordinary sane person, cause insanity, and have a psychiatrist who was unknown to everybody diagnose schizophrenia, or paranoia or a psychiatric illness. That was a successful outcome and the person would spend the rest of their life in an asylum in misery, but to the government scientists that was a success. E. Black Project scientist Dr. Barry Trower. Incoming voice detection. And it can be proven by Blue Mouse. Uh, I had some, uh, exchanged some emails with Elton Bird before he died, and he was a Navy scientist who was engaged in, in, in these um, technologies, and he said that the Blue Mouse is world's most sensitive microphone. If somebody says, I hear voices in my head, so you put the blue mouse onto the skull of this person. And this microphone, blue mouse, takes the words, the sentences that the person hears, and everybody in the same room can hear it. So it is not a sign of mental illness. It is military action towards this person with electromagnetic fields and electromagnetic beams, radiation. And of course, it's criminal. This can be, can be absolutely proven, but how many know a blue mouse? Very few, I would say. Video made by Gangstalking Attention Awareness.